Okay? We also recognize something else. When we talk about her wanting to marry up, this is significant. This is where it turns. This is her prime zone. Okay? She's going to be looking for guys here. These are options, but that's where she wants to go. And that's nature. That's hypergamy. Okay? We're going to talk about that in a second. Let's look at just from the female perspective. What does it mean to be a woman? Okay? First off, we have an average woman and a high-valued woman or here. We also have a relatively low-value guy and a relatively high-value male. Okay? First indication, nobody gives a shit about this guy. Sorry, nobody does. This woman, who's average, has no interest in you, and I can guarantee you the high-value woman has no interest in you either. There it is. Take a look. Let it sit in. I don't have to talk here. Feel that. There should be weight there. It's not good to be here either. Because what this is showing here, for a high-value woman, it is incredibly a competi highly competitive environment. Not only is it competitive, it's cutthroat. Because this woman here knows this woman will cut the price for his attention. What's the fastest way a woman does that? Without. Fucking. That's right. And that is why right now, today, there's a race to the sexual bottom. We recognize that the fact that the new kiss goodnight these days isn't a fucking kiss goodnight. It's a blowjob. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can listen to the good ladies at Gawker. They're more than happy to write article after article after article about the sexual marketplace from a woman's perspective. Sex is second base. You can get that on the first night, know what you're doing, confident, make the sale. You don't want to know what third base is. Third base is anal. Okay. St Steve's shocked. I know, you robbed Steve, you sold short. <laughs> Now, now what's, a, what's a home run, right? In this, in this marketplace, what's a fucking home run for a guy? It's anal and when she brings her hot friend. <laughs> all right, this is vicious, all right? We're having a little bit of fun with this, but these realities are out there. These opportunities exist. This is particularly vicious. Now, what we recognize is there are also a degree of mate guarding that takes place, okay, for these women. These women have to fend these women off. How do you do it? It's not just fucking now. How do you lock in a high-value man? What's the first thing you do if you're a low-value woman? Him Knock him up. Baby mama. Lock that bad boy down. It's not the boy that you're locking down. It's the resources. We can look and see mate guarding. Awesome displays of it when we look at the wives and girlfriends of sports athletes, otherwise known as WAGs, okay? What do we have here? Baby mama drama. Okay. The secondary thing you'll also note is status displays. Okay. You will have fashion industries absolutely catering to a sense of social standing. These women are buying Gucci like it's going out of business to separate a quality woman from a non to sit down and say, I'm in, you're out, and I'm reinforcing it. It's not to displays for men. And there are studies on this. All right. Makes it kind of interesting. This is not a safe place, okay? But these women are actually smart, too. Really smart. Makes them cunning. Really dangerous. You know why? What do smart, cunning, vicious women tell their lessers? You're good enough the way you are, baby. Enjoy this time. Enjoy it. Fat is beautiful. Fat is beautiful. You're good enough the way you are. You just need to be more beautiful. Remember that sliding bar? You just need to be more beautiful, not virtuous, more beautiful. And what do the women magazines push? Beauty or virtue? Product. Product. That's right. <laughs> They're not pushing virtue. This sucks. If you're a woman and you're average, it sucks to be you. I'm talking to you. All right? What do you do? You better woman the fuck up. Really? You need to focus on virtue and learn those skills and apply those skills. Otherwise, you're here. 
Let's take it a step further. Let's talk about the guys now. Average guy. What do we have here? Let's break that up. We already know 25% where it's a no-go area, right? We're not touching that. These are God's children, not appropriate. And in most cases, it's illegal to do so. And if it's not, it should be. I'm not kidding. It will be illegal to have sex with people in these areas. All right? The other 50% of their option. This 25%, they're below the sex threshold. These people don't want to fuck. These people don't want to be intimate. Why would you choose that? These here, holy shit. <laughs> I mean, holy shit. Okay? These people are monsters. Absolute fucking psychopaths. And I don't mean it in a, in a kind of a derogatory, I'm crazy. No, I mean these people are truly medically deranged. They don't have an ability or lacking it. It's worse. That should be a no-go territory already. That leaves you this. How does that look? You like me now? How does that look? Let's talk about this. All right. What do we have here? Who lives here? People with below average skills. All your options are bleak here. These are not people. They're less than average in attraction, less than average in social skills. Heightened value in drama, guaranteed. When you don't have the appropriate skills, you will utilize inappropriate skills. This is where you're going to exist. These are the people you're going to be choosing. This is the realm of codependency. If you don't know what that is and how you relate to it, you better check. Codependency attracts narcissism. Who's most narcissistic in our society? Women without social skills. Short-term mating strategies. Women that are told they're good enough the way they are by their betters. Enjoy the cock carousel now. Okay, it's just going to be an endless supply of men until it's not. They don't know any better to, to think differently. All right? It freaking sucks. There's also a biological response here your hindbrain talking. You're getting laid here. You actually have somebody you can date, you can spend time with. I know it's a lot of fucking work, it's drama, but you'll put up with it. You'll put up with it. Because it's biological, because you don't know any better, and you're not surrounding yourself with people that will tell you differently. I am. Don't do it. All right? In this area... If you are making decisions here, you are going to need more than a condom to protect yourself. I'm not kidding. You'll be lucky if you get a fatal disease. You'll die. <laughs> What's this line? It's a divorce threshold. How do you think family law is going to treat you? You don't have to get a disease to die. You just have to get depressed. Men's suicide rates shoot up post-divorce almost a factor of 20 times that of women. And there's a reason for it. You like this area? This is where you lose your children and your family. On basis of accusation, done, gone. How about your financial outlay, your business, the work you've done, everything you've done to provide, to overproduce? You're now at, at equality expected to share in half. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but men, you're going to get hit hard. Not only that, you have the rest of your fucking life to live here. You're going to know it. You'll be lucky if you got a disease and die. Lucky, all right? Be careful here. So what do we do to change that figure? What do we do to improve your lot? Develop standards, right? Start dividing this shit out. Start rewarding the virtuous. That's it right there. There it is. Start selecting people that are right there. That's kind of a hard fucking sell, right? I've just limited your range to this. Sucks. Really sucks. It gets worse. I kind of have an Eastern European background. Vampire lore is kind of big with my people. Let's talk vampires. I told you about monsters before. Let's talk about them. First rule about vampires. One, they exist. Two, big one, nobody knows. We keep it to ourselves. You have to let them in. You have to invite them into your house. They'll ask. 
They will come to your fucking door and ask to be let in. You have to let them in. A vampire cannot occupy your life or your home if you don't let them in. First rule of defense, keep the vampire at fucking bay. Keep them out of your house. We put garlic around the, on the doors. Repel them. I actively try to repel crazy. You know how you repel crazy? Act virtuously. It bothers them. They, they, reek. they, they have a biological reaction to it. They can't stand it. And they know you know the difference. They look for it. They ask to be invited in. Now, we have a human tragedy. What happens when you let the vampires in? God knows I have. How do you get the vampire out of your fucking house? First thing you're going to have to do, and we all know this one, you've got to drive a stake through the vampire's heart. Symbolically, what are we doing? The heart's a romantic entity. The heart is our romantic interest. You need to drive a stake in your romantic interest with that bloodsucker. And you need to be sure of it. You need to drive that stake right through the heart of any potential of that relationship. You need to kill it. And for good measure, chop off the fucking head of the vampire. You do both. Exercise any possibility of a relationship with that woman or a guy and get them out of your life completely. Chop off the head and then dispose of the body. Get them out. There's no other way. If you have a vampire in your house, in your life, kill the notion of a relationship. Kill any presence of her in your life. It's, ruth it's ruthless. I'm telling you, your best option is never let it in, in the first place. Come on the stage, my man. Awesome you. introducing you, and I can't wait to watch what uh, you got. My name is Socrates, and I am here to champion a cause. It is a cause and also a pathway that has been terribly degraded and demised in recent times. It is also a pathway and a destination that I hope changes in our society. But at this time in life, in where we live, it is immensely a dangerous environment. And I don't mean it facetiously. I mean it is terribly a risky endeavor. I'm not talking about a We know somebody who's out of control, okay? We know somebody who's just not physically a specimen of the human species we want to put forward. They know it, okay? Not only that, on a, on a social level, they don't have the social skills available as well. They are not projecting those elements of worth and value and standing within our society. It's true, not quite true. This is a hot or not scale. All right? This is why I know that hot or not isn't the only criteria. All right? We have four different individuals lined up here. And their sole response for getting a relationship, for finding what they want, marriage in this case, they apply what skills? If your only game you have is how hot you are, you're going to be pushing this vector right here. That's awesome. They're going to be hotter, they're more desirable, everything else. Problem is, only these individuals are actually relationship potentials. This is when you're getting tempted to date these people. These people here, nobody wants to be in a relationship with them, and they're not. All right? There's a harsh reality here. The market's, the market's responding. If you're not in a relationship and you're just focused on, on beauty and attraction, you're not going to get here. You can't get there by doing this. You're going to highly amplify your physical presence. All right, think about that for a second. You're going to highly amplify your physical being. Then you're going to act in a hyper-dominant way, traditionally. This is the traditional form. Not only that, you're going to get aggressive sexually. Let's put all that together really quick. 
over amplify your physical presence, getting socially dominant and aggressive and sexually domineering with people that are not dialed in socially. Anybody see a problem happening here? Anybody see a train wreck? Our sure as hell do. All right. It's not just a train wreck. Let's talk about their clientele. What are you going through? Because that's the only thing you guys really care about. You really don't care about what ends up happening there. You actually care about your experience. What are you going to go through? You're going to go through initially a very creepy phase. You put in a little bit of effort, you're going to be a creepy fucking dude. You only put in a small amount of effort, you are going to be creepier than fuck. Okay? Just being honest. Now, nice, there's a, there's a degree of reprieve here. See that? Enjoy it. Bad is beautiful. You're good enough the way you are. You just need to be more beautiful. Remember that sliding bar? You just need to be more beautiful. Not virtuous, more beautiful. What do the women magazines push? Beauty or virtue? Product. Product. That's right. <laughs> They're not pushing virtue. This sucks. If you're a woman and you're average, it sucks to be you. I'm talking to you. All right? What do you do? You better woman the fuck up. Really. You need to focus on virtue and learn those skills and apply those skills. Otherwise, you're here. Let's take it a step further. Let's talk about the guys now. Average guy. 